I'm not going to go through the full details because I'm sure you've read about this subject already or you've watched videos, perhaps several videos, or you've been scrolling through Twitter or whatever it is. So you're almost certainly very much aware of this case. The 16-year-old boy, Ralph Yarl, being shot by Andrew Lester, the 84-year-old, perhaps 85-year-old. When Ralph Yarl, the 16-year-old, rang Andrew Lester's doorbell, why did Ralph Yarl ring Andrew Lester's doorbell? Well, allegedly, Ralph was there to pick up his two brothers, but Ralph got the wrong house. He went to the wrong house, allegedly. The 84-year-old, 85-year-old man, Andrew Lester, proceeded to shoot Ralph Yarl twice, once in the head, once in the arm. Subsequently, Andrew Lester is facing two felony charges. He was detained, but he posted bond. So the bond was set at $200,000. He's posted the required amount, could be around 10% of that amount. But either way, Andrew Lester has been released from jail under certain provisions at this point. Of course, the investigation is still going to continue. Of course, Andrew Lester is very likely to face trial. Given what we're told at this point, point but I'm gonna say from my point of view we're not really told a lot we're told what was alleged to have happened from Ralph Yarl's perspective Ralph Yarl could be telling the truth 100% everything he says could be absolutely true and accurate but it is possible that Ralph Yarl isn't being entirely truthful it is possible come on calm down slow down don't get too angry too quickly it's possible Ralph Yarl may not be telling the truth entirely Ralph is saying that he was at that premises to pick up his two brothers he just got the address wrong that could be the case it could be that Ralph Yar was being an upstanding member of the community helping his younger brothers and that this awful situation occurred completely needlessly that could be the case it's also possible that that isn't entirely correct perhaps Ralph Yar was at the premises of Andrew Lester to do harm to Andrew Lester and or Andrew Lester's property that's possible you might not like to hear that but it is possible so why am I making this video I'm making this video and I am doing so quite belatedly everyone and their dog has already talked about this subject so I'm a little bit late on this one but I'm talking about it because I do find it quite important the race baiting needs to be addressed now I'm not going to pretend or try to give the impression that I have done a lot of research on this subject I haven't I could have I could have spent some time looking through various YouTube videos and scrolling Twitter and whatever but I haven't I haven't spent hours doing that I have spent minutes and within those minutes I've been exposed to what I can Considered to be a huge amount of race baiting and I've got this from people that I respect as well various people that I respect and I've been I've got to say disappointed by the race baiting in my mind in my opinion too many people let's say content creators but I mean I'm, I'm talking about I'm referring to people that are posting tweets so that's content creation to some extent posting YouTube videos the media everything that I've seen has been condemning Andrew Lester not only for having shot Ralph Yarl twice, which is extremely likely to be entirely factual, not only condemning Andrew Lester, the homeowner, for shooting Ralph Yarl, but for doing so because it is believed that Andrew Lester is a white supremacist. He's a racist. He shot Ralph Yarl because Ralph Yarl is black. Ralph Yarl is not white. Andrew Lester, it is believed, it is alleged by many that I've seen, is a white supremacist. He decided to end his evening by shooting a non-white person that's the rhetoric which I'm seeing over and over again and you know beyond that it's it's uh, expounded upon oh this white hate's got to end oh this is another hate crime oh our kids can't even be safe walking the neighborhoods and all of this and it's just rubbing me up the wrong way the reason why it's rubbing me up the wrong way is because we don't know if Andrew Lester is a white supremacist we don't know that I don't understand and why people are jumping to that conclusion. Now, I might well be a bit of a hypocrite, or I almost certainly am. I have a true crime channel. I cover a lot of topics. Most topics I cover are murder, torture, pretty nasty stuff. A lot of it involves children. And I don't do a lot of research. I'm not a journalist. I'm not attempting to portray a complete, thorough understanding of every last detail of a given case. I read through typically one article, which I condense to an extent, and that's pretty much all I go off. And when I go through most articles, when I go through most or cover most crimes, I almost always assume that the person that the authorities, that the detectives, that the police, that the investigators have charged, I almost always assume that they are entirely guilty. That is generally the assumption that I make, given 
the facts that are presented or the so-called evidence or the allegations that are presented within the one article that I read through. And in so doing, you know, when I do that, when I assume that the arrested party or parties is entirely guilty, you know, I am making a prejudgment. I am. And here I am a little bit annoyed, upset, whatever the right word may be, that too many people are making assumptions about Andrew Lester. So perhaps that makes me hypocritical, but I, I don't know. I think it's perfectly reasonable to make assumptions and to speculate. But to me, the race baiting is distasteful and potentially harmful. Here's an example of how it's harmful. It's giving reasons for and excuses for people to go out and riot. It's given reasons and excuses for people to go out and attack others, to attack white people. We've seen it. There's already been cases of we've seen groups of youths, a dozen, two dozen groups of youths, beat up a white girl on the basis of their reaction to this Kansas City, Missouri shooting of Ralph Yarl. The race baiting works in instigating hatred, in the furtherance of hatred. So when I read an article and it seems like the mother's boyfriend has killed the child and I go over that and I go, I, in my opinion, that guy's a scumbag and is guilty. I'm not furthering any hatred other than towards the person that is detained and is the prime suspect. But this race baiting spreads further than that. And well, this topic has been covered extensively. Again, I've not researched massively, but I've seen this in Twitter. I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen it in the mainstream media. And there's too many people saying this guy is clearly a white supremacist. And we can assume that it's safe to assume that because we already know that most white people or a lot of white people, especially older white people, especially perhaps older male white people are racists. And that offends me. I don't think there's good evidence for that. I've not seen good evidence of that. Maybe I'm blind. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm correct when I say I don't see good evidence of that. Now, I do see good evidence of black on black crime. Am I allowed to mention that? Is that going to upset some of you too much? There seems to be a lot of evidence in regards to black on black crime. Should I reference Chicago? I think the last headline that I saw was 32 shots over the weekend just gone. I think it was 32 the last weekend. It's typically 20 or more shootings, people being shot in the city of Chicago over the course of a weekend from Friday through to Sunday. Typically at least 20. Last weekend, 32, I believe. Perhaps I've got that wrong. Was that all black on black crime? Probably. Probably. I don't know. But that's my assumption given on the previous articles that I've read. Probably, if not all, then, you know, more than 80%, 90% black on black crime. So why are so many people assuming that this 84-year-old white man is a white supremacist. I just find it wrong to have this general acceptance that it's okay to jump to the race baiting conclusion. Again, I think speculation is fair enough. We all do jump to conclusions to a degree. I just think this is one which is very dangerous to do and to me it's disappointing to see so many people go over this. On Twitter I saw a post where, you know, just randomly, I wasn't even looking for the risk, it was just in my timeline or whatever, and some guy is saying whiteness is evil you know whiteness is demonic and it's just like wow you know guys what the heck there is this anti-white rhetoric out there or, or you know if, if it's inaccurate to say anti-white which I'm not saying that it is inaccurate but certainly there is this very strong belief that a lot of white people are racist against non-whites and racist to the extent that they're happy to cause harm physical harm other forms of harm and I don't believe that's the case personally. Maybe I'm blind. I'm going to note that the lawyer for Ralph Yarl, I don't have the details in front of me, but he's a famous lawyer. He's been involved in the George Floyd case, the Trayvon Martin case, uh, these other cases where race baiting is a major aspect of the case. I can't tell you my opinions on George Floyd. I can't tell you them because too many of you are going to find it unpalatable. I mean, I'll skip over a couple of things. I'll, I'll run through a couple of things. The guy had fentanyl in his system five times a lethal dosage. Am I right? Perhaps it's been a while, perhaps I've got that wrong, but according to my memory, could be wrong, check it yourself of course, five times the lethal dose of fentanyl. You know, he was saying that I can't breathe when he was sit sat in his SUV. Have I got that wrong? My memory's a bit faded, but come on guys. Why has Ralph Yarl got a lawyer who has been involved in multiple cases like this? Well, I guess from Ralph Yarl's point of view, it makes sense. Ralph Yarl's already earned or made two million dollars in his
Christmas GoFundMe. I think that's right. I saw it at 1.7 million. I'm sure it's exceeded 2 million at this point. Of course, I'm not suggesting that Ralph is undeserved of donations. I'm not suggesting that, but I think it's fair and accurate to say that Ralph Yarl's GoFundMe has been extremely successful, far more successful than many, 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 many other victims of crime, many of whom have humble donation requests, $5,000, $10,000 to cover medical expenses, perhaps to pay for funeral expenses. So to me, Ralph Yarl has been fortunate to be the recipient of such generosity. And why has he received such generosity? Well, because there is this belief that Ralph Yarl is the victim of a hate crime. You're all entitled to your beliefs. You're all entitled to your opinion. My point of view is given the harshness and potential dangerousness of those opinions, perhaps it would be appropriate just to wait for further evidence to come out and to be able to review that evidence. So what possible further evidence could come out? Well, if I understand correctly, the homeowner, Andrew Lester, had signs on his home saying security cameras, which to me indicates a couple of things that he might have security cameras. Not necessarily. Some people put up fake signs, but I would think there's a good chance that he does indeed have security cameras. And with that, I would think there's a good chance that the incident was at least partially caught on camera. And I would think and hope that such evidence will go a long way to show whether or not Andrew Lester acted in self-defense or not. You know, it will show whether or not Andrew Lester was in any way reasonable to have a perception that him, that he himself or his property was under threat. Now, personally, I believe that if a homeowner believes that they themselves or their property are under threat, then I feel that they have every right to protect themselves. And I think I'm right in saying that in Missouri, there are stand your ground laws, you know, self-defense laws. You're allowed to protect yourself in such situations. So I would think that the footage, security camera footage, should there be any, once it's released, will go a long way, if not completely, to show or indeed prove whether Andrew Lester acted in a reasonable fashion or not. If there was any justification for Andrew Lester to perceive a threat from Ralph Yarl or not. And if it can be fairly reasonably ascertained that there was the likelihood that Andrew Lester legitimately felt a threat, then we don't need to lionize Ralph Yarl. We don't need to put him on a pedestal if he was the aggressor. Now, I don't know that he was the aggressor. I'm not suggesting that Ralph Yarl was the aggressor. I'm not suggesting that Ralph Yarl was at Andrew Lester's property for nefarious reasons. I'm not suggesting that. I am suggesting that that's a possibility, merely because that is a possibility. And given the potential danger of rushing to and pushing the race baiting hate crime narrative, I feel that it's appropriate to consider the possibilities. So I don't know. Have I rambled too much? I have rambled for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so another couple of aspects are that Ralph was shot twice and then apparently, according to Ralph's aunt, Ralph had to knock on three doors in the local neighborhood asking for help before he did in indeed receive help. And I do struggle to believe that. I don't struggle entirely to believe that. If it is true, it's shocking that somebody who has been shot in the head rushes to local neighbors for help and is turned away. That is shocking. I find it somewhat unbelievable. Having said that, I kind of do believe it. There's the recent case outside of a Starbucks, I think in Vancouver, perhaps I've got that wrong, where a father approached a migrant of Indian descent who was vaping close to the father's toddler and the migrant proceeded to stab the father in the belly and all of the other patrons at the Starbucks decided not to intervene and the man collapsed and quite quickly died and we saw that incident play out because somebody was video recording it and doing a commentary oh hey look this guy's been stabbed over here nobody intervened so it is quite possible that Ralph's claim in this regard that he ran to three people's houses before receiving any assistance as shocking as that is it is i don't know i find it somewhat unbelievable but also somewhat believable perhaps i'm rambling once more yeah ralph's attorney specializes in civil rights and has previously represented the families of trayvon martin george floyd armored arbery breonna taylor and cameron lamb breonna taylor i'm 
not an expert on that case by any means, but didn't we find out that her boyfriend had a gun? Weren't they drug dealers? Something like that. I can't remember the full details, but I don't know. I just don't feel that at least some of these people, to the extent that I'm aware of the cases, I don't feel that they're entirely victims. Not entirely victims. And some of you are going to be upset by me saying that. But I'm going to say it anyway, because, you know, I want to. So I am going to make a, another video, which is going to be in regards to a similar case, which happened in New York State on Saturday. So a man has been charged with second-degree murder after he allegedly shot and killed a 20-year-old woman as the car she was in mistakenly drove up the man's driveway. The man is white. The woman that was shot and killed was white. So there are parallels here. There are similar cases equally tragic or more tragic even it doesn't have to be the situation that we have to race bait anyway i've rambled on for too much perhaps you've uh, clicked out quite some time ago